I'm here with Jeff, Jeff Owen, and um, we're talking about the potential of the House Whisperer. And I wanted to tell Jeff the story of the house I went to, the cottage in Glastonbury, and it's down a very narrow lane. And when I arrived there, well, the problem was that the the woman, she's married, um, and the cottage is owned by the husband and it goes back in his history through his ancestry many years and um, the problem she had is that she never felt in charge of her house it's as if she felt well there was someone else running it so I go into the house and we you know have a chat and welcome in and um, and I walk into the kitchen to get a cup of tea make me a cup of tea and I see three old ladies dressed in black in the corner of the kitchen, by the, by the oven, by the stove, in spirit, just talking away, nattering, nattering, nattering. And they, they, they weren't even aware of me to start with. And I, I realised that they actually were the ancestors of the husband. And they were still running the house. There is still another level that needs to be resolved. So although we released the three ladies, um, I don't feel they're totally gone because who holds the key is the husband because it's his ancestral home. And it's the person who holds the ancestral key that has to actually give permission from, from their whole being, from their heart, to actually release the story and resolve it. Um, but unless he does, it means that she is left um, really with, with, with no power to run her own home. And particularly for a woman, that's really important, that she's in charge of her domain. Yeah, I, I can virtually touch and smell the atmosphere of any situation, any house that I'm in. Um, and people sometimes say to me that, well, this is a new house, it, it's just been built a few years ago, but they feel like they're living in the 16th century. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I say to them, well, you are, because the original house on this land was 16th century. So that energy is still actually in the air. And that doesn't disappear because you demolish a building. Yeah? It's actually in the, um, what I call the etheric matrix of space. It's in the memory of the land. And, and it's like a holographic um, reality that is still there. And I walk in and my, my video replay kicks in and I can see what people are wearing, what they're saying, what they're feeling. And inevitably, there is a link between those people and the current person, my client, who has called me in to resolve something. And because I can see into that past um, timeline, I'm able to help them see perhaps why uh, they've been drawn to the house. It, it's like the situation that um, Mottis Font House, which a lot of people will know, in Hampshire. And uh, the person who bought it in 1934 uh, started to do renovations after he moved in. And it wasn't long after that he discovered it was one of his ancestors who founded the Abbey in 1201, 800 years before him. So somehow he got drawn back through the ancestral... Oh, he didn't know this. He didn't know this. Right. So through that ancestral timeline, there was a thread that connected him to his ancestor who founded the abbey that he ended up buying 800 years later. I mean, to me, that is just... You know, I come across this so often uh, in my work, but it's in that link that helps people understand why they've been drawn through the law of attraction to that particular house. It's not just a house. A house isn't just bricks and mortar. It has a soul. It has a history. Um, and... It, it, it carries part of their story that they're on this continuous weave of a thread of their own life story 
that they've called me in for because they're trying to understand something about their own life or well, something isn't working or not working so are these the people way. conscious that there's a problem with their house no they, so they, they, they they're aware that sometimes they, they think there's something in the house that doesn't feel right but they don't yeah. know what it is they don't know the language of buildings or energy but they just know there's something not right and that's main that's the main kind of impetus to contact you yeah, the, the something they just that needs that, sorting. They feel uncomfortable. They don't feel at home. They don't feel at home is... You can wrap it up in any other language you want, but, but they don't feel when you crunch it down, it is that phrase, I just don't feel I belong. Mm. I don't feel at home. Uh, or like the lady today, it's like the house has come between me and my husband. Mm. The house, she and that were, those were her words. They were her words. That's how the house it felt has come her. between us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The house has come between us. And when I hear that, I think, well, yes, it has. Fire, obviously, is a purifier. And, but also, with some people I've worked with, they are an indication of a person perhaps being so frustrated they don't know what to do. And a person's energy can get so intense, it can ignite a fire. And create a fire. Create a fire, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, because really, the a physical fire or any element is a physicalization, a 3D um, counterpart of something inside us, uh, an energy inside us, frustration. Nothing happens in the physical world that hasn't happened in the energetic world. It's that way round. People say, well, if there's a fire, there must be an energetic counterpart, but it's the other way round. Because if we get frustrated at something in life and we can't express that anger, we're going to focus it into something that will physically manifest and catch fire or, or a flood. You know? One and I come across this quite a lot. Yeah. And it's always to do with people's emotions. Yeah. So, so there's a kind of similarity there with the law of attraction a bit. Law of attraction, yeah, certainly. Is, so, you is, know, the vibration that you yeah. put out, you can get back. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Like attracts like, so to speak. Like attracts like. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. So, and you know, and if, if, if in your whole being, you know you need to clear a situation, maybe a part in life or a partner or something that isn't working, um, energetically you can just say, oh, you know, let's just get it out of my life. And of course, you manifest a fire, which is perfect for doing that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and all the drama that unfolds because of the fire. Absolutely. So you mentioned to me earlier on there's this person that's had a fire and they're not decided as to what to do after the fire, whether to move in or not. Tell, tell me more about that. Well, th this... First of all, why, why did that person contact you? Well, he, he's a friend and I've known him for a long time, Leo, Leo Rutherford, and yeah. uh, I've interviewed him already. And, uh, um, and he, he was running a retreat center with a couple of ladies and there were concerns from the neighbors and the planners and they really had to shut down but his frustration and his anger i feel intensified so much and in fact the fire started in his office in the house <laughs> and um and they'd actually uh, agreed to sell the house to someone else so they were going to move but um for whatever reason the universe thought okay we're going to really kind of wipe this uh, episode out of your lives. And Leo is 80 years old, and to get to that stage in life, he does beautiful work in the shamanic world, and then he loses everything. Everything. All his physical, worldly goods, gone. And this fire, all his drums, his equipment. And so when you get to the age of 80, and you've done all this work, and I asked him, where, where are you with all this? You know, you're teaching all this beautiful spiritual work and you have everything in life stripped away from you. What is that really, what is the message to you? And he tells me this beautifully on, on video, which uh, is it, so lovely to hear. So your work really does deal with really the, the business of living, people's lives, the quality of people's lives. It's people's lives, it's very profound, 
it's the reasons people live yeah. and and die because I work a lot with spirits. Yeah. And life doesn't stop when people pass over. And you know, no, they, no. They are they are still interacting with loved ones. Um, and if they haven't resolved something in the lifetime that they lived, they hang around trying to resolve it. Mm in the spirit world mm. but often through the new owners of the house mm. and this is where it gets really quite interesting and very exciting mm. uh, at some level and, uh, so it's like you um, use you use the house as a, a touchstone for uh, people's uh, to, to, to improve and enhance a person's well-being. Really. It's always it's about something help. like that. Would, yeah, you, would you say? Absolutely. It's always about helping the person move on to the next part of their soul journey. This yeah. is all for me. It's all about somebody's soul journey. Why are we here? Why did we choose yeah. to incarnate into this time? Um, to these particular parents, to this country, yeah. and this situation, you know, is there something that we've left unresolved from a previous or parallel lifetime that we've chosen to come back to? And I see the links to this, and in some situations I can get people to actually see that the people that they are living around and interacting with now are people they have had issues and adventures with in past lives and they've never had anything to do with strange worlds that I work in but they see it and feel it and know it so they don't know anything about this stuff no they're kind of uh, sort of ordinary people like Joe Bloggs ordinary people city people and the extraordinary thing is that the people that they know, the friends, the colleagues around them, they can actually meet and at some level resolve past life issues by dealing with um, some relationship with them now in current life. Yeah. And that to me is an extraordinary concept. Yeah, that you can Otherwise, if you don't resolve something from a past life, you choose to continue it now, you meet the people who were part of the theatre of a past life and there's an opportunity to actually resolve something. Maybe to make amends, to apologise. Or you took somebody's wife, got her pregnant and then sent her to be burnt as a witch. I've seen that and worked with that. That is like the extreme, but it happens. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go and we're going to meet some of these people. We're going to go and meet some of these people and get them to talk on camera about their experiences because it's absolutely extraordinary what people don't realize goes on in some people's lives we've just had some cheesecake <laughs> so this is real we, we are in a restaurant Look, italian Chris, restaurant it, Chris, it, i want to i want to uh, ask you yeah um because it's quite a thing to take on for, for you know anyone watching our conversation now to really accept that you know that the these spirit forms are running a house um, do you know what i'm saying well the thing is it's like i'm looking at you i'm looking at the people in this restaurant who's to say they are in 3d physical format or they're in spirit world i mean some of them are pretty old and they might be in spirit <laughs> world soon but uh, that's another matter um, <laughs> But that, that's my reality. I see different levels of reality. And I can assure you, a lot of them are not 3D real people. But when we, um, when we check back historically, I usually have confirmation that these events Oh, when you look happened. into records? Into records and so on. And in fact, just to tell you another story, uh, I was working with a couple in, in Oxford, and it's one of the stories in the book, and we were in the master bedroom, and on the bed I could see a lady in Victorian costume, fully dressed, lying on the bed, <clears throat> and next to her was her husband, who was dead, lying in a, wearing a pinstripe suit. Now this was odd, because this is in Victorian times, he was dead and she was alive but within the vision of both of them in spirit so it's like a play within a play a theatre within a theatre and so and the issue there again um, 
like the Glastonbury one, was that the woman did not feel in charge of her house. So I spoke to the woman on the bed and uh, said, you know, why are you still hanging on? Why are you not, why are you still in spirit and stuff? And this was in front of the woman? Yeah, it's in front of the client who was totally, you know, open to it. And most people are when I work with them. They, they kind of, I have a way they of getting They kind of go along them. with it. They just... Well, they kind of trust me and um, they actually begin to see through my eyes. And so, uh, and they get, and they start talking to the people as well. I know it sounds a little bit strange, but well, that's, I, that's, I've, <laughs> I've done this so many times now. It, I know, it I know, works. I know. It does sound strange, and it's something I think is important to kind of yeah to kind of to to express in a way that's almost palatable, almost yeah. So it enables the viewer to really enables people well, watching this now to connect I, I, with I don't it. Do know how I mean? to do that other than you just know, tell it I know, how it I is. Know, I know. But what happened was. Um, I asked this woman, well, why, why are you still hanging on to the house? And she said, well, the, the current woman, the owner, is not looking after the dairy maids. And there is a dairy, which is actually now an art gallery, so it's out of time. Did you know that it was a dairy? Well, she told me there was a dairy. It was a dairy, the art gallery, yeah. uh, when I first arrived. And um, But the, the woman in spirit, who was the original owner, said, but she's not looking after the dairy maids. So, um, so I had to tell her that we're actually 150 years on now, and um, you know the dairy maids have long gone, and my my client, the, the current owner, you know really would look after the house really well, and it went on like this, and we actually got the dowsing rods out, and I always get the client to get the dowsing rods, and we both doused that uh, this event on the bed, the theatrical event of the woman and the man who was dead, happened around the 1860s. And that evening she emailed me and she went through historical records that she hadn't known before and tracked that this man died in 1862. Goodness. So the dowsing was spot on. Um, so anyway... so and there's we, no way you would have known that? The, you didn't know it, anything? It's not, no, and, and the client didn't know it and I wasn't picking up from the client because she didn't know it until she did the research. But that's what we got with the dowsing. Okay. So anyway, back to that time, um, I spoke to the woman on the bed and said, you know, and, and no, I got the, the client to speak to her because it's all, I only facilitate, I don't do the work other than frame it, facilitate it, and got the client to promise that she would look after the house in the way, in her way, but in honouring, you know, the original woman's house. Her wishes, yeah. Her wishes. So, did that, and then after a few minutes, I could see the woman on the bed, and then she suddenly stretches her hand out and hands the client a key. So symbolically, she said, okay, the house is yours. And that was such a beautiful moment, it was extraordinary. The client couldn't see this. The client could see it. The client could see well, it. Well, I, I said she's handing you a key. She says, yeah, I can see it. I can, I can feel it. But this is, when I, when I open the gateways, people can see what I'm seeing. And that's the magic of it. So we can see that visually, you know, if you recreated this, you know, you can see it visually, the woman on the bed, handing the key, looking through the client's eyes and actually seeing what I'm seeing. And that's the magic, we're looking into deeper worlds and deeper worlds. Um, the, yeah, maybe a viewer, if you just had the camera on the bed, you just see a bed with nothing on it. Yeah. But what I'm seeing and what I'm facilitating the client to see is a theatrical reenaction because if an event happens in in the spirit world, it stays there for thousands of years until you come along and change it or resolve it. And by resolving it, that means that that woman in spirit can release and move on to the next incarnation and so on. Wow. So it, it's, you know, th this is... Guys, this is my day job. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be so frustrating because to, to talk about it, the way you talk about it, is a very, for a lot of people, it's like a real kind of, I mean, what? What yeah, are you talking what's about? He, what's he on? Yeah, you know? what's he on? Yeah, I know. Well, just a glass of wine. <laughs> but, you know, what gives it credibility for 
people that don't know your work is when you say you check the records. You know? When you check the, the historical record, and, and I've been to places where I, I can like elevate myself above the house and look down and actually see a battlefield and people fighting and I can see the costumes they're wearing in one case they're wearing like red and black and then the client checked out historically that that happened on the land that their house was built on wow. and in another one where it was a new house so they think new house no problems oh no new houses have a lot of problems and I was sitting in this new house and and all I could you see was this whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And the client, you know, the owners were like so um, agitated all the time. And I said, what was on this site before? And they said it was a main road. Road. And another... And, and another, you didn't know that at all? I didn't know that, no. But I could feel the energy. And another wonderful one where... Um, as a psychotherapist, I've actually done several of her houses, uh, including one in Italy. And she was living in the Hampton area in, in uh, um, Surrey. And um, when I was sitting in the house, all I could see was people going from the front door to the garden. Streams of people just walking through. And I'm thinking, are you aware that there's spirit traffic going from your front door to your garden? She said, Oh my God, I said, she said, um, you know, the back garden used to be the local gallows. And so the people were still walking through. Oh, and, the, and why she called me is they couldn't sell the house. And as soon as we resolved the issue around all that, the next day the house sold. The next day? The next day the house sold. And the husband didn't know it, the daughter didn't know that I'd been. They walked in that evening and said, my God, this house feels like a breath of fresh air. So people can feel the change when I work and change, you know, the atmosphere, the space. It must be so frustrating for you to not be able to convey this to people who don't really yeah. get what you get, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It must be really frustrating. Well, this is why I want to make, you know, the House Whisperer TV series so that people in some way can understand it and get a, a glimpse into my world, into the world of the House Whisperer. Yeah. I've written the book, you know, the House Whisperer, yeah. but you've got to read it and understand it. But to see it visually on the film, you know, with a bit of reenactment or something, um, I think would just be so stunning that... Uh, yeah, I just really want to share this work with, with the whole world. And the thing is, it's quite a private thing, isn't it, as well? This journey people it's very, go on. It's it is very a journey. Intimate. I mean, this takes sometimes six hours, seven hours. It's, yeah, it's a full day. It's very a full, full day, day. Um, on an average. So it's not that you just sort of turn up and sort it all out an hour and, and boff, no, off you go. No, and, and the thing is, the whole point is to get the client to, be, um, to realise what the issue is, the aha yeah. moment. And once they get that, it really is... Oh my God, is that why that I've sense. got the problem? I say a day, sometimes it's several days. Um, really? Like I worked in a, a castle up in Newcastle. Oh, um, in a where? A in a castle. In a castle? And she didn't know how many rooms she had. Um, she said it was quite big, but uh, and, and, and I looked on mapping and I thought, this is big. Anyway, I get there, drive down this long leafy drive, and I could not take in visually the size of this building, this castle. And I walked in and said, how many rooms have you got? She said, oh, it's not very big. Um, it's only a hundred rooms. Um, but my friends have two, three hundred room houses, castles around here. And it's like, okay, darling, that's fine. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll deal with it. And, um, uh, but the spirits that were knocking around there, one particularly that was running the whole castle, was a great auntie of the current owner, the man. And she was ruling the roost still you from the no, other side. You had no knowledge of this relationship? No, 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 no none at all. Um, but I saw her portrait on the staircase and she was active. And so, you know, I had to deal with that. And you could tell from the portrait she was active? Oh yeah, artwork, oh my God, yeah. Artwork holds the energy. It's like a gateway, it's like a portal into their dimension. So pieces of art that we hang on our wall, why do we choose a certain piece of art? Same reason we choose a house. It calls us. Law, um, law of attraction, resonance. Yeah. So a piece of art can open 
a gateway into the dimension of the artist. Whether the artist is dead or alive doesn't matter. You link into their world and live their life. Through the painting? Through the painting, because a painting, like a photograph, carries the DNA, the vibration of the artist. It's extraordinary how it works. <laughs> oh, God. So, you, you, you want to join me on a program with a journey with the house whisperer? I'd love to. I would love to. Because I think I would be the kind of, um, the kind of sober, the kind of uh, logical approach to it. Although I'm very open, actually. I don't think I will believe you with the bottle of wine you've just been through, Jeff. But cheers. Cheers. I'll see you on the TV.